So welcome back aliens, I'm Navin Reddy from Thursco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about, oh, again it's a suspense. So let's, let's, ima let's imagine a scenario where uh, you have a data class already. So let's say, let me get a data class and you know about data class right now. We have, that, we have done that in the last video. So let me create a data class name and we'll I will name this book and we'll go for two things here. We'll go for var name, which will be of course of type string. Okay, it will be of type string. And then we will go for price as well. Again, for book and for laptop, price is ma price does matter, right? So again, books are damn costly nowadays. You know, when you want to buy a good book, of course, it will cost more. So we got a data class here called as book, and it is giving me an error because I already have that class in this file. In demo, I guess. Let me just delete that extra, delete that extra file there. We don't need it. Didn't need it anymore okay so we got this uh, we got this book class right and in this book class we can we don't need anything else so let me just not put that curly brackets okay so we got a data class here again in this class we do have getter setters we do have i'm oh, sorry not getter setters but we do have equals method we have two string method we have copy method right so we don't have to we don't have to worry about all those things now what i want here here is i have this main function right instead of having one book i want to go for multiple books maybe list of books and I knew, and, and okay, we are not talking about uh, at least or if you don't try to guess what the topic is. Okay, so uh, we have we have a concept where you have a function. I mean, the main function I want to get multiple objects. Now, if you if you have multiple books, of course, you will put all those books in one bookshelf, right? So you'll be having a shelf uh, in which you'll be having all your books. So you'll be having multiple books, but in total, we have only one shelf. So at, at least in my home, I just have one shelf and I have multiple books around. I have maybe 50 to 70 books in my house. So all these books belongs to one shelf. Now, let's say if my brother says, hey, give me a book. And now I'm confused which book he's talking about because I have lots of books. But if he says, hey, get a book, get a Java book from the shelf. Now, Java book is one book which I have. Maybe I have multiple books, but let's say he's very specific now. He's saying uh, Java book, Java complete reference, which is ninth edition from this shelf. Now, in total at my house, I have only one shelf, right? So there's no much of confusion, right? So that means in total, we want the object of shelf is only one. So what I will do here is if I create a class called as bookshelf, which will have lots of books. So I will say this is bookshelf. And this will have lots of books, right? So I will say where books and we'll create a array. So we'll say arrays, array list of. So this array list of method is actually returns you the array list object. And we'll say this is array list of books. So we got a list of books now and we can add elements the way we want. Again, you can add elements here or you can add elements from somewhere else. Now what I want is I just want to make sure that in total we just have one object of this bookshelf. Now, I know you're, you're I, I, I think you got the point. The point is we are trying to create a singleton object. See, for book, I can create multiple objects, right? Because I, because I, we have multiple books, but then bookshelf is only one. So I want to create only one object for bookshelf. The way you, the way you can implement singleton design pattern, or maybe uh, you want to, you want to make sure that you have only one object, just make this class as object. Now, what is this object key? What it will do is it will make sure that you have only one object and that too, the object name would be bookshelf. So you don't have to even create the object. Now, if you know in Java, we have to create a class in that class, you have to make a constructor private. And in that class itself, you have to get a get instance method, which will give you the object. You know, we have, we have to do lots of things. In Kotlin, you just make the class as object and your job is done. Because this book shelf now itself is an object. So if you want to refer this book somewhere, you can simply refer that as book shelf dot book. So there's, there's no need to create object of this uh, object of bookshelf to get books. So bookshelf itself itself is an object. What I do now is I want to add some books in that. So I will say add and I will create a first book of mine. I will say the first book is of Java and the price for Java book is let's say $50. Right. And let, let's create, let's create three more books. I mean, two more books. And this book is of SQL and the price for SQL book is 40. And the last book is Kotlin. Uh, now again, uh, Kotlin is a new language, right? And we don't have much resources available on the internet. So of course the book price would be very costly. So let's say this is 80. Uh, what's that? Okay. So we got a book Kotlin, which is, which has a $80. 
and now so this is how you can you can use the bookshelf now this is a singleton object so in total we have only one instance of bookshelf right so we can do that with the help of object class again you can treat object class i mean the object keyword as a normal class itself so this bookshelf you can treat it as a normal class the only thing is you this bookshelf is a singleton class okay now what i do here is i want to print all these objects so what i want to print all these books the way you can do that is by creating a function i will say hey print show me all the books so i will say show books it will it should print all the books here so if i open this it should print all the books now the, the way you can do that is using a for loop and we can say i in books and then we'll print one one book so we'll say print ln and we'll print i now you might be thinking it will print the hash code not exactly i was smart enough to make it as data because it will print the data i mean it will print the object data itself right now how do you call that method it's very easy just say bookshelf uh, bookshelf dot show books you don't have to get an object again because bookshelf is itself is an object let's run this code and uh, waiting for the output yeah, can you see that we got the output, which is bookshelf, I and mean, we got we got all the books here, right? So that's the advantage of using this concept called as object. So remember, whenever you say object, it simply means that this is an object itself. Okay, I mean this is a class which represents an object, so it also a object name. Again, in 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 the in coming videos, we'll also talk about companion object. Okay, so this the concept is almost so when you know about object, you can also understand about companion object. But till then, this is the object. And remember, when you write instead of class, when you write object, you can directly use the class name as an object name. So that's it from this video. We have, we have, we have talked about object class or object thing. What do you say? Object in, in Kotlin. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for, for the videos.